and I, uh, I, it, I introduced myself to you because my kids, I have three kids, uh, the twins now are 10 and, and my oldest is 13. And they binged at the time of Jesus music, that's been two and a half years ago, they had binged every episode of the metal, they watched it nonstop, back and forwards, you know, all that stuff. That was all that played in our house forever. That's right. And about two months ago, two months ago, they started binging it again. So we're, we're right in the middle of it again. And last night they're watching the, one of the New Year's Eve episodes where they think Sue is going to kiss Sean. And then the other guy comes in and kiss and they all go like that. And I'm like, you have seen (laughs) two or three times, you know? So it was just cracked. It cracked me up how surprised they were. But anyway, yes. they love it. Thank you for all the entertainment. Uh, and it's such a good show for them because they all vary who's their favorite character at any given time. There's so many great characters in that show. Well, so. I agree. And you know, I, you know what? one of the things I really like about The Middle is that the humor is actually fairly sophisticated. And there are jokes that maybe your kids wouldn't get, jokes about like, like this, there's always jokes about the school teachers working these second jobs in the summertime, you know, which is just funny mm-hmm. for parents to, um, to, you know, see. Um, but I remember growing up and watching Mary Tyler Moore and um, all those kinds of shows that really were very high quality comedy. And I feel like I was able to develop this good taste in what's really funny by watching those shows because that was sort of a golden era of um comedy. yes and then Raymond and the middle are that's like another wave of really well-written comedy and I feel like your kids by absorbing the middle are getting a really good comedy education as yes. far as you know the jokes and the timing there's not it's not really cheap laughs Um, It's, you know, and it really is um, about relationship. So um, I I just, I'm I'm so pleased that they're, that they're into it so much. Oh, they are into it with a capital I. Uh, (laughs) We drive to school and one of my daughters like, who's your favorite character on the middle? I mean, it just, that's, that's what's in their brain right now, you know. Of course, I always say Mike, no offense, but Mike is always my favorite. Yeah, well, Mike's great. He's the great silence. <laughs> like, uh, who's who's the actor? Um, Long suffering husband. Yeah, but who's who's the famous actor um, from like the fifties? Who was the quiet kind of steady guy? I think I think he played Lincoln originally um, in the in, in early. He, 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 he What's the, the movie? With the where the guy single handedly captured all these Nazis, he was like a backwoods country boy. Oh, Gary, mm. Cooper, Gary Cooper. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So, I, I feel like Mike is kind of a Gary Cooper type, you know, kind of yeah, and silent. And um, but I don't know if you've gotten a chance to see Unexpected. I have, and I'm going to talk to you about it. I'm, uh, okay, I'm sorry, you know, our favorite Reverend Tim Tom. Yeah, you know, I was watching, and, Pat it, Finn. and I was like. <laughs> okay, there's there's Mike and there's Tim yeah, Tom yeah, and right. there's okay. So all right, so we'll we can talk about it. All right, okay. I won't let, we'll, let we'll, we'll man, throw in the interview. Let the man speak. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry because uh, thank you for indulging me on my uh, all the middle talk. Um, uh, but I knew my kids would. You know, I wanted to tell you how how uh, important it was for us. I'm really trying racking my brain trying to figure out what is the follow up. What can they watch after this and and really enjoy? But I think Raymond, really, the kids are not in it that much. Right. So I don't know that it would appeal to them. Yeah, they have the same to kind of be, yeah, like newly married with in-laws around to appreciate that show. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Unexpected is very sweet. And uh, I watch it. Uh, and, and like you said, there were those surprises where, hold on a second, you know, there's there's Tim Tom and he's got a guitar, you know, so (laughs) all these little, you know, connections here. Um, Was that something where uh, Patricia, you just called in favors or something or said, Hey, I'm doing this movie. Let's work together. You know, because we had this great relationship or something. Well, 
let me tell your your audience first the, about Unexpected, which is a really um, quirky, funny moving movie about a couple, Bob and Amy, who can't have kids, and Amy wants to adopt, and Bob doesn't, and it's their journey uh, navigating this problem in their marriage, and it's a very unusual, you know, take on infertility, adoption, relationship, and, but the bigger themes are about how we're all connected. And part of what's great, and Dave directed it, and we both produced it. And uh, what's wonderful about our business is we, you know, once you put yourself in charge, you get to decide who's in the movie. And speaking of connectedness, you know, we uh, had, well, we did happened the, to have friends that well, were when, great when, actors. Yeah. When we did the table read, I asked um, uh, Paul and Pat to come and uh, be a part of it and Neil. Um, you know, because we knew them so well and, and they were there. And so they came over and um, I wasn't sure which character, for instance, that Pat should play. He read several characters in the reading and he did one take. It was actually a different character, but he did this one take that you now see as the therapist that he plays in this film. They right. had it on the floor laughing so hard. Um, I said, y you have to do this character, man. You have to do this. You have to come play this. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a, you know, partly an experiment, but um, it worked out really well because Paul was brilliant in it. Neil was brilliant in it. Everybody was. Everyone, everyone stepped up. And yeah, Paul, and they, um, as you see, you know, Paul uh, here played Reverend Tim Tom in the middle, and he actually composed all those songs that he sang as the youth pastor in the middle. And then he just brought that skill to our movie and composed um, some music for that particular scene that worked out so beautifully. I mean, we just, he, he's worth his weight in gold. He brings so much to his parts. Right. And it's just, uh, it's not an over the top, you know, it's, it's like a little bit of more subtle comedy, which mm -hmm. I felt like was in a lot of the movie. Uh, it kind of struck that balance of drama, you know, there's so many kind of touching moments to it. And it's realistic too, you know, not that I know people who are in that exact same situation, but um, I mean, I've known people who, who've had, you know, infertility trouble, but uh, this is a pretty unique set of circumstances <laughs> in this movie, but it's not slapstick or anything. It, it just felt really real, almost uh, like documentary at times, you know. Yeah, I felt, uh, we both felt that um, what we strive to do with our projects is um, to find that middle ground of... Yeah, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. I, my goal was always to be authentic about it because the comedy or the drama, nothing's going to work if you're not authentic. Um, right. I didn't want it to be heightened. It, people had to play it for real. And, and then there's, as a result, there's a payoff, you know, and the actors all bought into that. And, um, and yeah. I, I mean, there's, there, there is a slightly heightened reality because it's comedy also. And it's right. this interesting combination of comedy and drama that, uh, as I said, kind of uh, sits in I, between. Right. I don't want to give too much away for the audience if they haven't seen it yet. But um, right. the running, the, there's a running gag of the therapist, that you, as you know. Um, and that, that's a little bit heightened. You know, that, that's... Right. We take some liberties there. But that's all in the name of comedy. And it's it's all it's kind of a relief from the what's going on in the rest of the film. So uh yeah. I thought um and I won't go into specifics, but I, I really thought uh the endings endings, you know, mm -hmm. uh were sweet, you know, and and did justice to the characters. You know, uh, I, I I really appreciated that part of it. You know, it's You're sometimes right. it's hard to it's hard to stick the stick the landing. Right. But I felt like it really did. Well, thanks. Well, and I think what what's great I, about this movie is we don't shy away from the difficult things in life. And I think sometimes you know people like to escape into movies um, to kind of get away from their issues. And I think this is a way to face the realities uh, and difficulties of our life, but still find joy in it. So you don't have to really escape from it. You find the light in these dark situations. David, uh, talking to you, uh, 
and we've talked about uh, Patricia's uh, history here, but as I'm talking to you face to face, now I didn't notice it when I looked you up on, on the web, but I definitely recognize you from 24 uh, <laughs> and your other roles as, you know, like uh, I think uh, villainous, right? Is that? Is I that did correct? a lot of villains. I did a lot of villains at the <laughs> yeah. beginning of my career. Um, the, the first big one was the, I played the bad guy in the last of the Dirty Harry movies called The yeah. Dead with Clint Eastwood and Liam Neeson. And that was, that was a, that was just lovely. Um, so I did a lot of bad guys early on. Then I kind of shied away from it. Um, and, but then when, when Patty was on, got on Raymond and the series was clearly going, uh, I was working in England at the time. I think it was with Stanley Kubrick at the time. Uh, I took a long time off to be home. I wanted to be a father to my boys. We didn't want to be one of those Hollywood couples that, um, you know, were constantly working apart. So, right. Um, but then when I came back, I did 24, which I just, I had a blast doing that show. We actually took the boys out of school uh, so they could come to the set and watch their dad get shot. <laughs> oh, first of all, they saw, they saw me do a really great car stunt, which was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, to play shoot well, them up in the streets of LA, that was a lot of fun. Well, both of you then, uh, I, you know, in my eyes, you're involved in two of the, I mean, top five series on television ever. I think 24 is probably my ultimate action drama series. It just, it's the gold standard, I think, as far as that goes. Just like um, the middle is for comedy. I, it, both of them are just amazing. Well, that's nice. Well, you know, John Kassar, who won um, Emmys for that series, one of the directors and producers, he and I have stayed friends all of these years. And we're actually hoping to work together. He's uh, He sent me some scripts and we're, we're working on some stuff. So I'm hoping we'll be doing more stuff together as uh, as time goes on. And you were, you, 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 I, you had an American accent in 24, right? Is that correct? Uh, no, that one, was, that one was English. Homeland, I had an American accent. Oh, yes, okay. I had and an I American accent Homeland. in a number of different things, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, talk about your other, uh, we've talked about the, the, the surprise, you know, the middle people, but uh, it was cool to see Joseph uh, in this movie. Uh, and when I was showing my kids some of the other surprises from the movie, I pointed out, I said, you know that, you know, that this actor too, from when he was a kid, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, he ran away from dinosaurs. Oh, wow. But he does a, he does a really good job in this movie. And Anna does too. They, uh, you want to talk about them a little bit? Well, jo they were both amazing. Um, Joe is um, one of the greatest guys I've ever met. He's a total pro. Um, and, you know, he played, uh, for your audience, he, he played John Deacon, the uh, bass player in uh, Queen, in Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Recently, yeah. Um, so he came on board, and, um, and Anna was, um, was a late addition. And uh, what can you say about her? She, the two of them together elevated those characters um, there's one scene in particular, which I'm, you, you probably know, which I don't want to tell the audience about, but it, it actually, I've seen it a thousand times and I cry every time. They really brought their A++ games um, to, this, to this film. Um, Anna, Anna Camp is a delightful character. And, she and I did a play together in New York right. years and years ago, and uh, we were so thankful that she came on board. And I think it's a testament to the script, which was by Rodney Vaccaro, that they both immediately, they read it and they were on board. Yeah, and this is a low yeah. budget film. So this is not a money maker for money, them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we really uh, appreciate them and appreciate what they brought to this movie. And it's the magical thing about making a movie. Um, it's really an ensemble effort. And you can see there's wonderful stuff on the page. But then the actor takes it and just does something a little bit different with it. And it takes it to a whole nother place. And you you don't right. even know it's coming. And so it's wonderful to um, be a part of that magic when things and little things like a, a door shuts and the curtain kind of blows for a second. Those things are not scripted. And when we, you know, you see them on the monitor as you're watching it happen, you you grab each other, and you go, oh. 
as, <laughs> you know, it's just as a director, you, I, I'm always well. As any director will tell you, you're trying to create the atmosphere and the you know to to ha give the actors the soil, the fertile soil in which to to blossom. Um, and being an actor myself, I, I speak that language. So I, I feel like that was one of the big successes of the film, if I might say so, is, is just that the performances are so good. Um, right. And I mean, everybody without, you know, the, the smallest character to the two leads, everyone was, everyone was terrific. Yes, yes. Um, Patricia, there's something I wanted to ask about. Uh, I follow, I've followed you on Twitter for years and years um, uh, as, a, as a Christian, I follow people who are of like mind and uh, I appreciate, you know, a lot of your stance, very public stance sometimes, you know, would run against popular opinion, especially as it regards to the pro-life movement. And uh, I felt like this movie is very pro-life, you know, it's very life affirming. Was that one of the reasons why you wanted to tackle it? Not really. I mean, I think life affirming is is really the the way to describe it. Um, everybody has their own journey. And I think what we really were struck by is how everyone is connected. And that is the overriding theme, I think, for this movie. It just so happens that those themes are being told through the eye, through the, the circumstances of infertility and pregnancy and whatever. Well, just so just so you know, uh, the book that we optioned back in 2004 was a book written by Bob Chart called Enslaved by Ducks. And it was about um, a couple that adopts animals. It didn't really work as a screenplay. It's a lovely book. Um, but it didn't have the... It, it didn't have the adoption element, which I introduced. And I introduced that um, after a table reading that didn't go so well. Um, and I turned to the writer and said, that's, what, that's the engine that need, really needs to drive this. So it wasn't about any of those other things at the time. It was just about that. Therefore, the animals become a substitute for Amy, you know, for, for kids. Right. Um, well, what we didn't know about Rodney, our wonderful writer, is that both his girls were adopted and we'd been working mm -hmm. with them for two or three years. So it kind of struck a nerve. And a lot of those conversations in the film um, are, are lifted somewhat from his conversations with his wife when they were going through the same struggles. And we know a lot of other couples have been through the same thing. So again, it goes back to that whole question of authenticity. You just you just let the characters speak for themselves. I mean, I really learned right. that when I directed the documentary. You have to let the characters speak for themselves. Don't impose stuff on them. They will you just or your job is to draw them out. And, and by the way, a quick aside, uh, I had to shoot the movie twice because we got suspended for COVID in the first year, and and actually had to recast and come back and shoot pretty much the whole movie all over again. So, oh wow. Yeah, so it's been a whole, it's been a long road and a long challenge, and yeah, here we are. So you have a whole, do you have a whole uh, other cut with with the other actors, or how far along were you? I, I do. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've I, my first my first cut though uh, eventually was about two hours and twenty minutes, actually two hours and seventeen, and this one is about an hour and forty six. So if you do the math, it's you know I cut out at least thirty minutes, and th and that wasn't easy. That wasn't right. easy at all, um, yeah, as 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 people say in the in the trade. Uh, you know, you have to you have to kill a few babies on the way. I hate to use that phrase, but that's kind of what you do. Because <laughs> well, so, you're giving birth to this thing, it, and it doesn't yeah, all make yeah. it into this onto the screen. I mean, I've been essentially pregnant with this film for two and a half <laughs> years, and. Mm -hmm. The film's finished. I finally handed it into the distributors after, you know, innumerable post-production um, issues. And at 2.30 in the morning last week, I woke up and I should I have left that scene in? And she goes, stop, stop. Enough. Yeah. Enough. It takes a while to <laughs> unload it all. Yeah. Know. Right, right. Well, I just think, uh, and, I, and I, when I said that about uh, the adoption pro-life message, I didn't mean... This, I know this is this, this not a propaganda movie. I, I know that it's not, that's not what you set out to do with it, but I appreciated the life affirming and I felt like it really lined up with what I have followed from her, you know, on social media, yeah. uh, some of the things that have been posted. Yeah. Well, I, so, I think, yeah. in, I mean, just to close this, this thought, um, 
Patty and I, especially in our work, are about, well, in our lives, we're, we really like to think we're about building bridges. Um, we're both of us tired of the divisiveness and the, the hatred that's flying around. And we wanted to do to present these characters in a way that's completely non-judgmental yes. um, and, and allow them to speak to the audience. And we've had people from all across the spectrum reacting to this film in a very positive way, uh, I think as a result of that. You know, yeah. which, and hopefully it starts a conversation initially about, yeah, we are all connected, aren't we? There's a wonderful speech that Bob gives about it, about that exact thing. Um, yes. the film. So, yeah. Thank you both so much. And I, I'm sorry, I lost track of time. It's me jibber jabbering and all that stuff uh, going on and on. Uh, I'm very chatty. If you can't tell, I'm sorry, but uh, I really appreciate y'all, uh, taking the time today. I thought it's a lovely film and look forward to getting the word out about it. Thanks, Dwayne. We I appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you so much. We need all the help we can get. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Bye.